A lot of people will tell you hitting a baseball is probably the hardest thing to do in sports. And in MLB The Show 21, it's no different. But us gamers like to add our own flair to things, whether it's ruining a 3-0 count because you couldn't help yourself, turning a monster home run into a pop-up, or missing an up and in fastball that you knew was coming. Batting in MLB The Show can be an adventure. So with that, I'm going to go over a few things to help you improve your hitting in MLB The Show 21. All right, let's get it. Now before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video, the sooner you accept the game will never guarantee you 100% success on anything, the sooner you can realize that the game cheats sometimes. I kid, but perfect contacts can go right to outfielders, good ones can die at the warning track. It sucks, but it happens in real life so don't stretch yourself out too much. The goal is to be able to do it so consistently that it doesn't matter over the long run. So alright, let's get to it. First off, one simple way to help improve your timing on pitches, especially fastballs, is have some movement going on with your left stick or button. I know some of you just went, what? But let me explain. Whether it's the left stick or button press, it's way more difficult to track and or catch up to a 100 mile an hour fastball with your fingers just sitting there on the controller opposed to doing some extracurricular activities before you hit the ball. Some effective ways are swinging the left stick in a circle so you're in the midst of already moving the PCI while the ball is coming, which can help you not pop it up as often because you didn't get your PCI there in time. Having a left stick constantly in motion can also eliminate the pesky habit gamers have of dropping your PCI on pitches right down the middle. Now staying still can definitely be done to great success, but it's harder to catch up to pitches consistently. Another approach is going to practice mode to tell the pitcher to throw you nothing but fastballs high and in. Now start tapping the top of your normal swing button over and over until the fastball comes and you're ready to swing. Now I bet you were super early there because your momentum tapping the button was all crazy. Now slow down your taps a bit. It's silly but it does work. Now did you have a better swing on the fastball? Doing stuff like this can help speed up your reaction time without doing much of anything. Now, we're all going to chase what we think looks good, but you can easily knock off a few strikeouts a game by realizing the counts where the pitcher has no reason not to throw you a ball. The most obvious count is when it's a 0-2 count. He's probably not going to give you something sweet to hit. Or even at 1-2, they still will be a little shy to visit the strike zone. And you will see that trusty curve he hasn't thrown for a strike all game make an appearance. These counts, you should have it in your head that I'm not swinging unless he puts it right where I want it. You know, even 3-2 counts, plenty of guys aren't afraid to see if you're really about that patient life and throw some dirt ball in your area. An easy change that can affect your hitting in a big way is changing the camera view and finding the one that helps you the most. The strike zone cams are extremely popular views because most find it easier to track the ball and tell balls from strikes. But not everybody will be able to succeed on one simple camera. It may be harder to pick up pitches being so close or maybe you just want to see the batter as well, so something further out may work without giving up too much hitting for you. Different angles will help you see pitches differently, so if you're struggling with hitting, testing out different camera views should be one of the first things you do to see what you like best. Now if you're using zone or directional hitting with the buttons, you're going to want to get familiar with the contact swing with non-power hitters, which is circle on PlayStation and B on Xbox, mostly on two strike counts. The contact swing will widen your PCI to be able to cover more area of the plate. When you hear an announcer say he should protect the plate, this is what it means in the show. You're making it harder for yourself to strike out by widening your plate coverage indicator. Now new to MLB The Show 21 is the ability to practice against specific pitches or locations or both in custom practice. And this addition is huge. Are you struggling with laying off a curveball in the dirt? Practice against the pitcher who throws that pitch and simply tell him throw me nothing but curves down low and see if you can improve your patience against it. Now since the game won't be nothing but dirt ball curves, you can add in a high fastball to mix it up. Once you feel confident in your laying off ability to truly put it to the test. This mode can help your pitch recognition and make the necessary adjustments to hit or lay off certain pitches you may struggle with. One of the most momentum crushing things is hitting into a smooth double play. And one way to decrease your likelihood of hitting into a double play is to not swing at the first pitch. Especially if you just got a hit with the last batter. I think the likelihood of swinging on the very next pitch increases by at least 30% if you got a hit. 
It's about 95% after a home run. We all know it's true. But the eagerness to swing early can get you out just as quickly by falling into the trap of the pitcher throwing low to force you into a double play. You can also lower your PCI before the pitch expecting them to throw low. So unless they throw an obvious ball, you can eliminate you hitting over the top, grounding it into the dirt. Another method is you can avoid swinging at anything below the midsection altogether until they get two strikes on you, which can work wonders as a lot of people who aim for the bottom of the strike zone would throw off speed and breaking balls, hoping for weak contact, especially if they got a sinker, you know it's coming. But these pitches are also harder to control and as a result with you laying off of them, will cause them to throw more balls, which as a result forces the pitcher to throw you something to hit later in that bat. It's key for you to have a fixed point if you're using a camera view that looks out towards the outfield, where you want to always focus on and pick up the ball from the pitcher. Since pitchers have all different types of deliveries, focusing on the area of the backdrop where the ball first appears lets you cancel out the extra nonsense and helps you pick up the ball where it's going and how fast as soon as possible. Different stadiums have different things to look at since cameras aren't level with the hitter. The batter's eye most times isn't the outfield wall but it can be some grass behind center field that has a dark spot you can focus on. Some places have a nice railing for you to look at. You ever feel you perform better in certain stadiums? Maybe it's just easier to pick the ball up there than other spots. Being aware of a human pitcher's tendencies can be huge for you as a hitter. No matter how hard people try, everybody has them. I like to look to see what are his opening pitches versus lefties and righties. I went over earlier, what does he throw on 0-2 counts? Does he always want you to chase? Okay, so I won't swing at anything not down the middle. You want to stay a step ahead of the pitcher as much as you can to make situations manageable for you. And lastly, now this is something I went over in my beginners video, but this is so important I'm putting it in both. You have to know how to take pitches the opposite way if you want to be a complete hitter. Since the weakness for a lot of guys is anything on the inside part of the plate, you tend to overplay it while exposing the outside part of the plate to plenty of shenanigans. But you have to have the patience enough to let the ball keep traveling to the plate well past the point where you know you would have swung. If you don't treat each part of the plate as its own separate thing with their own different timings to hit even the same pitch, you're going to pull everything you see 100% of the time. So if I throw you even a fastball along the way, you're going to hit a weak pop fly or grounder. This is why all speed or breaking balls along the way are so effective even in real life because batters aren't trying to wait and instead want to Hulk smash the ball as soon as it sniffs the batter box. One way to work on your opposite field hitting is to not sit up and in on every single pitch because if a pitch even has a hint of coming into that area, you're gearing up. And when it sweeps across the plate, you swung early and there's a ground ball double play. So with this approach, the possibility of a pitch hitting the outside part of the plate is possible in your head and you can adjust easier to it. When I play, if I can tell my opponent is sitting inside fastball, I know I have an advantage until he can adjust his approach. Now for those curious, in the video I was using zone hitting, button input type, analog type flick, PCI coverage indicator on, PCI center circles, and PCI inner basic, with the color being yellow. Sorry sports gamers, hope I was able to help you guys out and help improve some aspect of your hitting in MLB The Show 21. And if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And once you're with us, hit that bell icon at the bottom so you don't miss anything we put out. All right, people, I'm Chris. Thank you all for watching. And be good, y'all.